Hi folks, welcome to Programming for Tablet Transmitters. This first segment, Programming 101, is going to take you through the absolute basics of getting your, pro your transmitter programmed up to get your airplane in the air for the very first time. Now, we're going to be utilizing the big Fataba 14MZ for illustrative purposes because it has a nice big screen. Um, but the unique thing is that with the 14MZ, everything is basically the same that you would find in, in the 8FG, the 12FG, and of course the 12Z. Now, we're going to be looking at the main screen of the uh, 14MZ first. Over in the left side, you're going to find the timer display. And then through the middle, the trim position indicators. Over here are our main menus. Uh, you'll see that we have the linkage menu, the model menu, and the system menu. But let's drop into the system menu on the 14MZ real quick and take a look at what's available to us there. Now, one of the first things I like to do on a new transmitter is go ahead and set up my username. This is kind of a nice security thing for you. So we'll press that button. You see my name's already set up in this particular radio, but we drop right in there and you see the little mini keyboard. We just type in our, our name however we want and hit return and we're done. We hit the escape key to come back out. And then we'll go up in the upper left corner and hit the username and that'll take us all the way back out to uh, the uh, level that we were on before. Uh, one other important piece of information here is the information uh, button. And this is where you can go in and see what the software version is for your particular radio. You can see on the editor of this particular 14MZ, it says 1.6. And that was a, a new software update in early of J July uh, 2010. So um, it's always a good thing to check what software version you're on. Look at the uh, Fatab RC website and make sure that you're running the most current software for your particular radio. Again, we'll hit the uh, upper left button to uh, back up a menu level. And one more time will take us all the way back to our home screen. Now, one of the very first things you're going to want to do is to set up the model type. Now, of course, all of these radios are capable of setting up a fixed wing, uh, helicopters, or sailplanes. But uh, we want to go in and uh, we'll hit the linkage menu, which is our main model setup window. And uh, that's where we'll start our, our main setup for our models. And we'll go up here and just uh, touch the little toolbox there to get into the linkage menu. First thing we're going to do is move over to the Model Select button. And again, this is the same on all the radios. And you'll see here, we're going to hit the New button. And this will shut down the radio just briefly, stop it from transmitting. And as it creates a new model for us. The next screen we're presented with are the various model types. We have the wing type and the tail type. Now here, if we just click the, uh, the wing type, you'll see that we have all sorts of different wings presented to us. If we want to set up a wing that has two ailerons and one servo driving each wing, we can simply hit the two aileron wing type, and that automatically locks that in. Then we need to select a tail type. We'll just hit the normal button for right now. Um, it's asking us if uh, we want to uh, lock in this model, and of course we do. We just hit that one time. Next thing it asks us is if we want to use the fast multi-mode or the seven-channel mode. If you have a seven-channel receiver or lower, you would hit the seven-channel mode. If you have the eight-channel or the 14-channel receiver, then you would want to use multi-mode. Now we'll just go ahead and select multi for now. Hit return and then back up to the upper left corner. Hit the frequency button to come back up a level. Now here it's creating the model for us. And there we have it, our new model is all selected. Now one of the next things I like to do is to go up and look, go into the linkage menu and look at this servo monitor. This tells us a lot of different information. The first thing we want to do here is to look and see that we in fact have two ailerons displayed. You can see aileron 1 and aileron 2. If I move the aileron stick, you can see them moving on the display. So this is a real handy. Also you'll notice that we can see each channel output and what 
function it is assigned to. An elevator assigned to channel one, rudder assigned to channel two. Now this is important because with these more advanced transmitters, they may not always appear perhaps in the standard locations that you were used to seeing with your older analog type transmitters. So always make sure that we uh, check this out. And servo monitor is one of your best friends when programming a radio. And we hit servo monitor up in the corner again, back up. Now I want to show you a different way of doing things here real quickly. Um, we're going to go into model type again. And we looked at our model uh, select menu. Now we'll jump into model type. And we're going to just change the wing type and the tail type back to uh, one aileron basically and a normal tail type. In other words, going back to the uh, original default setting. Let's hit normal there and uh, model type's been changed so we confirm that. And again it's setting up the model. Uh, coming up on, there we are, we're right back up going back into the linkage menu and we're going to go into the function menu now and this is one of the most powerful menus on the radio this is where you can tell whatever you want to happen to happen you can assign a channel or a, a function to any channel now in this case I'm going to assign another aileron channel to channel 5 and this is just a different way of setting up a dual aileron setup or a dual servo aileron setup so we'll hit the gear button one time, and I'm just not going to worry about selecting aileron run 1 or aileron 2. I'm going to go straight to aileron, click that one time. It's asking me to confirm that. And now you'll see channel 4 is aileron and channel 5 is aileron. They've assigned them properly to joystick 1 and trim 1. We'll back back up, go into the servo monitor, and let's take a look at what we've got here. There you can see aileron and aileron on 4 and 5. They both work properly. And the trims, of course, both work properly. So this is a real convenient way to uh, set up a multi-surface or and multi-servo wing or tail type. Uh, in programming 102, we're going to go into this in a lot more depth. Again, let's use this servo monitor screen as our best friend. Back back up here. And one of the next things we want to do is get our radio powered up, our model powered up, and we want to make sure that our services are going in the correct direction. So get your airplane powered up, and we need to start wiggling the sticks to make sure that everything's going right. Now, uh, more than likely, something needs to be reversed. We simply hit the servo reversing menu, and let's assume that the rudder is, is incorrect in this particular case. We just go over to rudder and hit the button that currently says norm and we'll be presented with a screen that asks us if we want to reverse it and we simply say yes and again this is the same on all the other transmitters you just don't have the touch screen and now our rudder is reversed if we go into the uh, servo monitor screen we can confirm that and of course you'll want to confirm it on your um, on your actual model so there we've got our channels all going in the correct direction the next thing we want to do is to go in and set the limits so that each servo is not overdriving the particular surface. And that's done in the endpoint or ATV menu. And again, let's take a look at elevator, or rudder in this case. Uh, we'll look at it and you can see if I displace the rudder, you'll see a little bar graph move over so that it, you know which way it's moving. And you can all see, see the travel shown there as 100% on both sides. So if I want to lower the travel, I can simply click the, uh, the little icon for the travel amount. You'll see the bars now that have appeared over on the right side of the screen. If I use the double down arrow button, that's going to change it 10% at a time. If I use the single button, that's going to only change it 1% at a time. So there you can see two clicks gets me to 80%. We'll switch to the other side now and do the same thing. I'll take it down to 80%. So now I've reduced my rudder to hopefully what is an acceptable amount. You don't want to overdrive those services at all. Um, you, no binding or anything like that. Please make sure you've got a nice mechanical setup. Now the limit settings here are a little different. What they do is you may have some mixing turned on or something like this that would actually cause the rudder or whatever channel you're working with to move further than your normal travel limits are set. So this limit no, regardless of what mixing is turned on, 
will not allow that surface to go past whatever you set the limit at. And it's set exactly the same way as your, your travel volume. So you can see I can hit the down arrows, move it down 10% at a time or whatever I want. And then over on the ends, you'll see the little bar graph come in to indicate to you that uh, you've actually reduced the overall throw that is available to you for that particular channel. Now we'll back back out of this menu. And really what we've got now is an airplane that is basically set up and ready to fly now. Obviously you have to go through each of these steps for each of your channels, the throttle and everything. But um, we've got it all set up now and you should be able to go fly. Now in programming 102, we'll take you a couple of steps further. We'll go into dual rates and uh, how to use the function menu a little bit more. But for now, Programming 101, we hope you've enjoyed this segment and perhaps learned something. Thank you for stopping in.